Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayati zamanun ala ummati. There shall come a time upon my ummah, upon my nation, upon the people who follow me, upon the people who believe in me. They call themselves Muslims and believers. My ummah, when their prayers are not prayed correctly, and when high buildings spread in every place, when people swear in the name of Allah a lot about everything without fulfilling their oath, people curse each other a lot. Bribery and adultery prevails. People neglect the hereafter in order to buy the luxuries of this world in exchange for the hereafter. So people become materialistic. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ذَلِكَ فَالنَّجَاتَ النَّجَاتَ If you see this happening in your time, then seek refuge, seek refuge. Find a solution to get away from all of this. It's not an easy solution, but you need to stay away from all this. In one other hadith, a man said, Ya Rasulullah, what is seeking refuge? How do I seek protection? What do you mean by that? And Rasul Sallallahu gave an expression like this. He said, by adhering to your house and keeping your mouth shut and hold your tongue and hand from doing unlawful until death comes to you. There's going to come a time even worse than this one, brothers and sisters where a person becomes so confused about what is happening in the world, so deluded by everything that they see and hear, that they're not going to know what to do and where to go, and who to stand with, except to stay away from things, even if they mean sitting at home, abstaining from all of this, because there's not much they can do anymore. They want to do good, but where do they go? They want to avoid the bad, but it's all the way all around. I heard a lot of young people say to me now, why does Islam say everything is haram, haram, haram? This is not true. Islam does not say everything is haram. But when there's so much haram around us and corruption, Islam looks like it's forbidden everything. But because we live in a time where the Prophet ﷺ told us that sins will be taken lightly and that modesty will be very invaluable, which leads us to that human life becomes invaluable. All these hadiths can be found in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood. These are called the six books of hadith, Numajah and Nisa'i. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us Prayers are not prayed correctly. People pray without really meaning to pray anymore. Their five daily salat are done in a hurry, in a rush, with neglect. No importance is taken to them. If money comes in the way, the prayer is lost. The prayer is delayed. If there is something of worldly benefit to them, the salat becomes the last thing on their mind. Then he said, high buildings are spread everywhere. This hadith also comes in a different manner. When Jibreel alayhi salam once entered, he sat as a man. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, we saw this man enter one time. And the Prophet sallallahu was sitting with us in the masjid. And this man who entered, he had a very black beard with very black hair and a very white thawb, clothing. He did not look like he was traveling because you couldn't see any dust on his clothing and none of us knew him. So who was this man? They didn't have airplanes in those days and cars to travel very quickly. And he sat to the Prophet ﷺ very respectfully. He asked him several questions. And the last of the questions he asked him was this. Mata sa'a? When is the last hour? When's the world going to end? And he said, the questioner who is asking me, or the person you are asking, is no more knowledgeable about its hour, about its time than the questioner. Meaning you and I don't know. I don't know any better than you. So we asked him, what are its signs? Some of its signs when it comes close. And he mentioned two things, very important. When the mother, servant of Allah, is one meaning, it's probably the most likely meaning. When the mother gives birth to her daughter or son, and this daughter becomes like a boss, a master over her, as if her mother is her slave. In another hadith, Rasul said, when the son, when the son, the boy, son, he chooses his friend closer and distances his father away. This time wasn't never existed in their days. Even among the Christians and the Jews, this didn't exist. It was a time that was very unusual to the people. That the mother will give birth to her daughter who when she grows up, she acts like she's the master and boss over her own mother and their parents in other words. And you will see the destitute barefooted Bedouins who follow who are sheep herders or they are shepherds. They, are, they will be building very high towers in the sky, skyscrapers. Today we see this, many signs of this everywhere. The Bedouins are actually today in the Emirates, places like the Qatar. Now they're actually competing in this. Yatatawaluna fil bunyan means that they will be competing in making high towers. Who will make the higher tower than the other person? So materialism and uh, technology 
becomes the main motive of people in competing for. And if you look at society today, you will see that when people say we are an advanced society, we don't live in the caves anymore, what they're trying to tell us is that now we are more intelligent. With what? What are we more advanced in? Rasulullah said, They'll be competing about who can make the highest buildings, high rise. Meaning they'll compete with their technology, with their sophisticated engineering and building. What is so special about an advanced society who knows how to build machines or buildings or send satellites into space or build rockets? or build atom bombs. The only thing I can think about is to kill people, to destroy the poor, to show up in worldly possessions for mere greed and power. But as for modesty, as for character, as for trust, as for family, as for worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as for justice, as for leadership, injustice looking after people, as for, you know, the uh, value of human life, of children looking after the orphans, the poor, the needy, the desperate, all of this will be lost. No one will be thinking about it. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, people will compete for worldly possessions, for technology. And they will say, as though he is saying, society will base its advancement on their technology. Whatever happened to the morals, justice, equity, treatment of others, the rights of others, modesty. This is what values a society, not how nice you can make things and kill people with it. Our Rasul sallallahu said, people will swear oath by Allah on false things. So you come to buy and people will use the religion to convince you to buy their product. By swearing by Allah's name, it only cost them this much, for example. Our Rasul sallallahu tells us that they will curse Allah. La'an. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, people will curse their own fathers. They said, Ya Rasulullah, who curses his own father? He said, there will come a time where people will curse, you will curse their father, and so they will curse your father in return. So what, what is the meaning of this? It means that people no longer value parenthood. People no longer value the relationships of people with others. They'll wipe them off, they'll curse them, they'll have hatred, people only think about themselves. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that bribery and adultery will, be, will prevail, prevail. And he even said, that there will come a time where a person will be walking down the street and they will see a man and a woman committing acts of adultery and fornication before everyone's eyes, not afraid of the criticism. And they will say, well, at least you could have just moved aside so that we can walk past, you know, just make some room. It's okay what you're doing. It looks cute, but we just want to walk. That's all, you know, keep going. SubhanAllah. This means that modesty and morality dies out completely throughout the world whether they are in the Muslim lands or the non-Muslim lands. Adultery becomes so prevailed that husband and wife divide and they divorce and children become, you know, to sort of live on their own and morality is gone because they cannot control their lusts and people will be afraid of getting married because they don't want to commit. They cannot control their desires. The man still wants to sleep around, the woman wants to sleep around. People neglect the hereafter in order to buy commodity from this world. They sell the hereafter for this world. And this is when a person neglects their worship, neglects the hereafter, and they focus on what they can see only in this world. Their clothing becomes extravagant. Their food, they live to eat. Their coffee, they live to drink coffee. They love to display themselves with their ornaments only to show off their beauty to the people whom they're not meant to show it off to. Yani the men and the women, they begin to display themselves in front of the opposite gender and forget about their wives and their husbands whom they should be sharing this beauty with. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he was sad. What is he saying? I saw in Hellfire a group of women, for example, whom I've never seen the likes of before. Meaning of the future. They are dressed but undressed. They walk in a seductive manner. And they do fashions upon their heads in order to, in a type that attracts attention. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, this is something of the future. He's never seen the likes of before, not among the Romans, the Byzantines of his time. He did not see them among the Persians of his time. He did not see them among the Mushrikeen of his time or among the Muslims of his time. This is something which the humans begin to do at large, Muslim, non-Muslim. And he said, among my ummah, from my nation, subhanAllah. And how often do we find young people imitating and copying? Who? Celebrities. Where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did tell us, that there will come a time when upon my ummah, they will begin to follow them step by step, foot by foot, that if they were to enter the hole of a lizard, they will follow them. They said, O Messenger of Allah, do you mean that we will be following step by step the customs and traditions and morals of the Christians and Jews of that time? He said, yes, who else? The Romans, 
will be the largest in number and power and influence. This is a hadith from the Prophet you find it in Sahih Muslim that the Romans, the Romans in those days used to call them a room. A room means today basically the Europeans of today. That we, they will be the larger amount, they will have the most influence on people such as Hollywood, such as you know Britain and France and all those other places. They will have influence on people, on my ummah, he said. And you will follow them step by step. Not, not any, some things are good, but majority is bad. Their customs and morals. What do we see in our young people? Whether they are in the Arab countries or outside, in the Muslim countries or outside, in the Western countries or beyond it, the Muslim youth, look at them. What kind of things do you like to dress in? What kind of people do you imitate? Who do you really want to be like? Really, don't fool yourself. Who do you really want to be like? Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, he said, Before the end of time, you will see this prevailing sign. What is it? There will be afflictions, 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 trials, tests of hardship. Afflictions that are like smoke filling the air, darkness with dark clouds above you. And it will weaken the heart of a person just like his body weakens. In the morning he is a believer and by the evening he becomes a disbeliever. And in the evening he is a believer and by the morning he is a disbeliever. So much fitan, confusion, deception, lies. A person in the evening is a believer. By the morning they went on the internet and it confused everything about their religion to the point where they become atheists. They become something other than their own religion. We live in this time today. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul Sallallahu tells us these people who wake up in the morning believers and by the end of the night they are disbelievers. He said, The reason is that they sell their character, their morals and their religion because of a gain of this world. Lust, desire, money, a car, fame, fortune, whatever you name. A Rasul Sallallahu said, A time shall come when a person is given insight in the daytime. So he's very aware. He can tell you so many things about everything of the world. But in the evening he commits every sin under the sun, takes bribes, become dishonest, etc, etc, etc. People are very good in front of people. But when you are alone in secret, they break every sin under the sun, as though Allah is not watching them. This is hypocrisy and we live in a world of hypocrisy. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you a question. Think about this. If you take the whole world, it is made up of people. Take away the disbelievers if you don't want them there and count the Muslims alone, for example. Then the Muslims are made up of nations. These nations are made up of states. These states are made up of communities. The communities are made up of families and the families are made up of units of families. Each unit of families is made up of members. Unit members, one, a son, a daughter, sons, daughters, father, mother. When this individual and the next individual, the third individual, all these one individuals become hypocrites and corrupt their state, what happens? The whole community is automatically corrupt. The whole state is already automatically corrupt. Then the nation and then the world. More than one point something billion Muslims in the world. And look at our state. What Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells detrimental hadith wallah. He said, لا خير فيكم إذا فسد أهل الشام. There is no good in you, O Muslims, when the day comes that the people of Sham are corrupt. Their state is corrupt, they're neglected. Their state is destruction. There is no good in you. As though saying, Sham is the heart of you. And if its people are not looked after anymore, what is wrong with the ummah of the Muslims of the world? Something is terribly, terribly wrong. We can blame the leaders. And Rasul Sallallahu did say that there will come a time when you will have leaders who are in the form of dictatorship and they are unjust and they will lead you in tyranny. And he also said, when the time comes, when the amana, the trust is given to the person who cannot hold it and the person who is a liar is believed and the, believing, and the person who is trustworthy is said to be a liar. Yes, it's going to come. But what about you and me who are not leaders? We have a responsibility first for, my, for yourself. Are you fulfilling that responsibility by being a person obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A person fulfilling your character? A person fulfilling your deen in the proper manner? Or are you a hypocrite in the day good, in the night sinful? In, your, in a person's face, mashallah, behind his back, depending on who's around me. Listen to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu He said, the last hour will not come until you find yourself that if you are among 20 young men, more or less, and you check their faces, you look at them all and you are a believer, you're a good believer and you looked at, you know, a number of 20 or more or less and found out that none of them fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is time for the hour. What is he saying? He's saying when you see young men, there are many of them and they're in large numbers together hanging out. 
in certain places or going together and you cannot see any signs of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their faces as a whole, then wait for the last hour to come. We're talking about from the Ummah of the Prophet and what does this mean? In the nightclubs, they go in groups. In mixed weddings, singing and dancing, they're in groups. Going out to meet two or three girls, they're in groups. A concert happens where a singer comes along or a dancer or whatever and they go in groups. Not one or two in groups. They go to commit fahisha. They go to, you know, have argila all night until Fajr time. Neglecting the Maghrib prayer, neglecting the Isha prayer, neglecting the Fajr prayer because as soon as they get home, they're too tired. They got to give their body rights. So these young people full of energy and muscles and brains and, and strength, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you as the leaders of this ummah. You are the responsible people wasting their time, wasting their bodies, wasting their energy, wasting their youth, wasting their health. On what? On just fulfilling the desires of this body and smoking things that kill you, burning their money on things that kill them. Everywhere in the world they exist, brothers and sisters. Ar Rasul Sallallahu said, when you see this, then await for the last hour to come. And he said, when there will be more evil people, persons than the good ones, to the point when, listen to this, when the believers will hide themselves. يَسْتَخْفِي مِنْهُمُ الْمُؤْمِنِ كَمَا يَسْتَخْفِي الْمُنَافِقُ فِينَ الْيَوْمِ the believers will hide themselves too ashamed or too embarrassed or too scared to show themselves that they are believers. Just like the way Rasul Sallallahu said, just like the way hypocrites today hide themselves. Hypocrites. In Medina, there were 17 hypocrites who used to look like Muslims on the outside, but they were actually spies there to plan and plot for the destruction of the Muslims. So they used to act like Muslims, that they were actually disbelievers on the inside. There were 17 of them. No one knew about them except for Rasul Sallallahu and Hudayf ibn al-Yaman. Even Umar anhu asked, who are they? And he wouldn't tell him. They were like that. And he said, it will come a time where the believers will hide themselves from the, because of the amount of the corruption that's out there. But Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the believers begin to feel shy to show that they're believers. They're too afraid. They don't want to get up and feel proud of it. Abadan because they're afraid that they'll be blamed by their friends and told, look at you, you're acting like a Muslim now. And subhanAllah, I, what, one of the worst thing we hear now is this trend where young people call each other this three letters um, uh, acronym, FRG, they call it, fake religious guy or girl. And to deter people away from trying to be religious, Rasul Sallallahu tells us, he tells us in this hadith, this ummah will always be under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and within and under his protection, under his care, so long as its scholars and its reciters of the Quran do not become hypocrites only to please its leaders. And so long as the righteous people do not give fame to those who are criminals. And so long as the good of them, the good people do not submit to the bad of its people. For when they do this, Allah will lift his care from them and he will allow for the oppressors to be upon them and they will oppress them in such a hardship they will afflict upon them torture and then poverty, poverty will afflict them as a nation. Does, is this not the case now in the Arab world? Yes, it is. Zainab radiallahu anha, the daughter of, or the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because he had also had a wife named Zainab. He once woke up from his bed with his face pale and he said, min sharrin qad iqtarab. Woe to the Arabs, the Arabs specifically, from a terrible, a badness, a terrible evil that has come very near to them. This is 1,400 years ago. And he made this with his finger. He did a little ring and he said, the radam, the seal that has been placed around Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Gog and Magog, this much has been opened from it. Allahu A'lam, what this means for us. But what it does, what, it, what is important is that Zainab radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, anuhlaku wa fina salihun, will we be destroyed or will we suffer like this? And while there are among us those who are righteous and innocent, Rasul sallallahu said, yes, idha kathur al khabath. If immorality, immodesty, badness, evil, it expands and spreads and becomes the prevailing thing. So what will happen to these innocent, righteous people? Rasul Sallallahu said, يُبْعَثُ عَلَى نِيَّاتِهِمْ They will be gathered on a day of judgment on what they died upon, on their good intentions. For Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, I want you to listen to this beautiful hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim. He said, كَيْفَ بِكُمْ What will you do when? Iraq, مُنِعَتْ الْعِرَاقُ قَفِيزَهَا وَدِينَارَهَا When Iraq is denied its currency. The قَفِيزَهَا is the old currency of Iraq. What will be your state and what will you do when a sham, when its currency is denied? And what will you do when Egypt, its currency will be denied? And you return to where you began in the first place. 
What does this mean? When Iraq is denied its currency, when a country falls, its currency falls as well, doesn't it? And you no longer deal with its currency. Another currency replaces it. Al Rasul Sallallahu or the narrator of this hadith, the Rasul Sallallahu was asked, How will it fall? And he said, By foreign intervention. Foreign intervention. Al Ajam. We live therefore in a time that is paving the way for the coming of this person called Ad Dajjal. Ad Dajjal literally means the liar, the deceiver. And this deceiver cannot deceive people so perfectly until a road or an environment has been prepared for his coming. Ad Dajjal requires that the environment has to be set up for him. And with all this Dajjal, this era of deception we live in today, you look at the media and you don't know what to believe anymore. You trust Al Jazeera, then the next day you see something, you think, oh my God. Can I really trust them? You trust another media site and then the next day something kills you. And where do you go? Media is the most powerful tool today that has ever existed. The most powerful. And we do not live in a world of wars with weapons anymore. It is a war of ideology and media. Deception upon deception upon deception. So these are only the beginning of the beginning of what is yet to come, brothers and sisters. The result of it, well, over time the Muslims left the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and became materialistic. It's as simple as that. Materialistic, competing with materialism and selfless selfishness, thinking about ourselves and putting our deen in our hands and our world on our heads so that if the hat on our heads gets out of place, which is our dunya, we put what is in our hands on the floor, which is our deen, in order to fix our dunya. If the dunya is fixed, I'll grab the deen. If the dunya is wrecked, I'll wait. I don't have to practice the deen right now. This is the metaphor I give you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to release us from the misery that we are in now. I'm talking about the misery of our hearts.